Hey gang, I've had a lot of requests for doing uh, that major minor thing. <laughs> um, to find the mix between the uh, minor pentatonic and the major pentatonic. And I thought, um, while I don't usually think of it as major pentatonic versus minor pentatonic, I thought I'd show you at least an example of where you can apply it, where I think it makes a great deal of sense to apply it, makes it a lot better, and um, sort of an idea or two on how to get there without expending too much effort in memorizing scales and scale patterns and so forth. So anyway, let's try that. So the example that I'm going to give is uh, basically is the solo from Cream's Badge. And the solo portion basically just goes same as Boston's More Than a Feeling. It goes from D to C to G four times, and then it plays an A minor. So it goes like this. And on the f on, after four times, it just does this on that A minor, okay? So that's it. And um, for reasons that I don't want to get into too much, uh, I'll just mention it. G, C, and D are chords that are all in the key of G major, and yet we're starting on a D chord. Because of that, the quote proper uh, scale that we'll use, that we would use would be D mixolydian. That's the perfect scale that all the notes, there's no sour notes or any flat notes or anything like that, or any notes that just clash. Um, while that's strictly speaking true, I don't think we need to think about mixolydian or anything like that. It doesn't hurt, but I don't think we need to think about that. Here's, here's the tactic that I'm going to try and do here. Um, we're going to take major pentatonic, or I'm sorry, we're going to start with uh, something I think most people use, and that is minor pentatonic. I should mention I'm not going to put tabs in for the solos that I'm doing because I'm going to improvise them, okay? And um, we're, we're going to start out with the minor pentatonic. So I have a backing track here, and uh, I'll try and at least do a solo using the minor pentatonic. We'll use the blues box position right here. Seeing that we're starting on D, let's pick D minor pentatonic and see how that sounds. I think we'll see that it sounds okay. Um, uh, in any case, we'll just use this, try and use this box right here, maybe the extended blues box. All right, and I'll put a little distortion on it to get that going. All right, here we go. Well, that's that. Um, let's try now a different scale. And uh, this time, uh, we're going to try just moving to the pure D major pentatonic. Now, what I'm going to do here is not what I suggest that you do when you solo. I'm going to suggest that you start out knowing that minor pentatonic. And maybe you know it in different positions, right? You might know this D minor pentatonic right here. That's our standard blues box, but we can also go down here. Right? Or we could go up. You know, we can go up to there. You know, play it all over the different all over the different positions, right? It doesn't matter as long as we know that one scale and most of us uh, at least have some idea. I'll try and stay in the home box, more or less. Uh, all right, so we're going to play the major pentatonic. Now, <clears throat> most of you know that to play a major pentatonic, one way to do that is to simply move down three frets. So instead of playing the root with your first finger, we're going to move down three frets and play it with our fourth finger, okay? Now, I'm just going to demo that these notes work uh, by using this scale, all right, in the, in, over this uh, chord progression.
Um, so both of them work, but you know, one is a little bit maybe too sweet, one is a little bit too salty or too, um, I don't know, it's just kind of too hackneyed. Everybody's used to you know, playing that kind of stuff. We've, we've heard that many times before. What if we want to blend it, all right? So here's what I'm suggesting. Pick one of them, and we're just going to arbitrarily pick, you know, for me, I might pick the major pentatonic because I like the major pentatonic as a starting sound. But I think for most people, they pick minor pentatonic. So we're going to pick the minor pentatonic, and then we're just going to, in each minor pentatonic position, we're going to find the D minor chord or chords that fit in that position. All right, so if we're going to pick this one, we already know that this D minor chord with a root on the sixth string, 10th fret, the root on the first string, 10th fret, and the root on the fourth string, 12th fret, those are all Ds, and those D mi that D minor chord fits all of those. All right? So that's the first step. <clears throat> the next step is we're going to look for the thirds of those chords. Now, I, I know this isn't maybe that common to many of you, but we're going to look for the thirds of those cards. Um, a minor triad is made up the th of the first of the scale, the root, the third of the scale, the flatted third of the scale, uh, which is the flatted third, <laughs> and, the, and the fifth of the scale. For, for D, that would be this. So it's D, F, and, uh, G, and A, D, F, A. All right, that means <clears throat> that F, <laughs> that F is the third, right? So the F is the magic note here. So for all of these Fs, what we're going to find is we're going to find uh, that we can tweak them up a half step. Now, there's no secret here. The major triad is just the first, the, or the root, the third, and the fifth. So instead of the flatted third, it has the third. So the difference between a minor chord and a major thir chord is just that third. Right? And a lot of the blues, a lot of the fun in the blues is playing around with that. That's all we're doing is we're playing around with that. that. That line right there is just playing around with that third. Is it the flatted third? Is it the third? We don't know. It's going to be one of the two. So I think in order to play that major minor stuff, just find all the thirds all over the place, and you got it, right? So let's find those Fs, all right? So here's an F right here, 10th fret on the third string. And so here's an F right here. Uh, 13th fret on the first string, right? Here's an F right here on the fifth string, and so forth. And we can we can find them all over the fretboard if we want to. But if we just kind of confine ourselves into these into this area right here, we've got this as well, the sixth string, 13th fret. And all of those can be tweaked. Right? And that's the fun of it. That's really the fun of this. Uh, we can also play, find Fs all over the place. But let's try that now, soloing, by just kind of tweaking those Fs just a little bit, all right? And you'll see what a difference it makes. Anyway, I just want to finish up this video. So that's pretty much it. You know, you pick the scale that makes sense to you and tweak that third. Find all the chords, find all the thirds to the chord, and uh, make it work, right? So if you're playing, we did it in, let me take that distortion off. 
-hmm. We did it in the 10th position primarily, but you can play, let's say you pawn to play in this position. Find the chord. There's a D minor. There's the fifth, or there's the uh, third. There's another third right there. Right, that F. All sorts of things you can do with it to make it sound more playful in terms of is it minor, is it major. And I think that's just the best way to do it. Find the chords and then find the thirds of the chord and then focus on those thirds. All right? Anyway, hope you enjoyed this one, this little lesson let or lesson vignette. I don't know what to call it. Small one. All right. See you on down the road.